welcome CEO Generator Hostels, Frederick Corrales, and Senior Editor Skift, Greg Oates. Hello, Frederick. Hello. How are you doing? Brilliant. It's good to see you again. We're going to talk about um, Generator Hostels. I think if I, I imagine if uh, we pulled everyone in this room what a hostel was, everyone would have somewhat of a Cringe. similar, sometimes definitely, but somewhat similar image in their head, but that's not generator hostels. Could you just you know, take a few seconds and tell us what that is? Uh, gener it's funny, um, we're being labeled as a disruptor. Uh, we're being labeled as a lifestyle brand. Uh, we aspire to be a lifestyle brand. And uh, we basically have changed the formula on shared accommodation. So the traditional hostel offers bunk beds, multi-accommodation, shared accommodation in rooms. And uh, we've taken that and created a much higher end, I don't like to use the word luxury, experience whereby strong focus on design and what I would label an extreme focus on experience uh, to really accentuate uh, everything that happens during the journey for the guest uh, at Generator. We operate today with 12 open sites uh, across Europe. Two under development, one in Madrid, and next year we open in Miami. And 7,700 beds. 8,500 beds. You've grown since I read it. So yeah. with the idea being with hostels, you're measuring it in beds versus keys. Everything is beds. So we don't talk treb par, we talk treb, treb par. I mean, we use beds for everything. OK. Yeah. We have a 30-second video that we can take a look at. So this, this is a whole new vertical in hospitality. You're blending the communal spirit, the communal spirit of a, a hostel with the design narrative of a boutique hotel with cool food and beverage, um, you know, fun programming. So, I mean, could you talk a little bit just about the overall guest experience? Yeah, and some of the coolest cities on the planet. Yeah. Yeah, and we want to come to New York pretty bad as well. Um, overall, it's interesting, I've been in hospitality my whole career, background in Carlson, and selling rooms and sleep my whole life. We actually, the least important aspect of our guest stay is the bed. They're in a shared room, we always do en suite, so they're not going down the corridor, so it's a, in that sense, it's an enhanced experience. But average age is 24, uh, so we're like in that sweet spot of the new generation, Generation D, I think you call it in some of your research the sort of digital age consumer, uh, and the millennials that we're tired of talking about, but nevertheless, that is our bread and butter. Um, they uh, really live for what happens uh, in terms of the design of the space, the food, and we don't talk about food and beverage, we talk about restaurants and bars, the music activation, uh, the events activation. There is literally all the time something going on. So there are DJs, fashion shows, art exhibits, poetry readings, book launches, film launches, uh, you name it, it's happening at Generator. And we create this in order to bring in the community. So when we talk about our design, our design is every single generator is bespoke. Everything is unique. Even to the point where a month ago I put a stop to some silly central idea about creating centralized collateral across, meaning printed material. We now do it unique for every unit because every unit is totally unique and represents local. So uh, we do a lot to bring artists in to paint and sculpt and decorate the spaces, and that's what people buy. So the premium comes from the experience, and to put that into sort of financial terms, our average bed rate across the state is 35 euros. Uh, traditional hostels are selling beds between eight and 20 euros. When we open Amsterdam, in March, we were selling beds in a quad, in shared room, at 100 euros a night. My shareholders called me and said, Frederick, something wrong with your website. I said, no, 
it's supply and demand. But the guest doesn't, they sleep from two till nine, they're young people, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I sleep a little longer. Mm -hmm. and, and then they go and just live life in our space and mix and mingle with the crowd. See, that's, for me, that's where it starts getting interesting because, and we were talking about this earlier, you know, 15 years ago, I could afford to travel to Rome, Paris, London, New York, and pay for a hotel. You know, people, millennials now can't, you know, $250 or what have you. The idea being also that everybody wants to, wants to spend less for, a, you know, accommodation so they can spend more in the city, everyone's more experiential and whatnot. So that's where this becomes really exciting because now, you know, if someone doesn't want to go to a hotel, then they can look at a, an Airbnb, but some people want more service. So that's kind of where you, you know, fit this niche. You really don't have any competition. No. First time in my life that I can say we don't compete. There are 18,000 hostels on the planet. The average size of a hostel is around 100 beds. 1% uh, of them are branded. You actually have the Seidel Group and what they do with Freehand. They have two right now. They do a fantastic job. Uh, today, I think Accor announced a new brand called Jojo. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I, you know, we actually want competition because we need for the hostel sector to move up to help all of us lift and go with the tide in terms of pricing. Uh, and I think everyone is following that vein. i tell you what I think about is the guest who stays at Generator, stays at Moxie, stays at 25 hours, stays at Freehand, and many of these fantastic brands that are out there today, where are they going to stay when they grow up? Will they go back to the traditional? I don't know. Okay, so that, that leads to the next area too, because even though I don't necessarily want to stay at a hotel, because I'm thinking about my budget, maybe I'm not, not thinking about Airbnb, because um, you know, I want some more service, so now I'm looking at, at a generator, but at the same time, I'm a little past that age where I want to sleep with three other guys in the same room, right? <laughs> <laughs> I want my own room. Me too. <laughs> you know, I, um, so, as more generators have come online, there's been a higher percentage of, of single rooms. So can you just talk a little bit about that? Maybe the economics between sure. that and the... We do uh, about a 70-30 split on average across the state. That said, in London, it's about 95% dorms. Mm -hmm. In Berlin, it's about 100% dorms, actually, in one of the units, and the other one is about 70-30. And we've added the private accommodation. Again, it's very sparse, right? So you have the room, you have the bed, there's no TV, no mini bar, there are no amenities, you have your own suite bathroom. Um, we've added that because uh, we have uh, a demand for some private accommodation, so singles, doubles. And actually in three, three units we do suites. You know, you go to Barcelona, we have the most phenomenal suite overlooking the Sagrada de Familia as it's being built. You can watch it from the suite. Mm -hmm. But you can turn it into a six-bedded dorm. Um, and the dynamics there are, I mean, for those of you who are from the hotel industry, we basically take the, the most simple math, and it gets more complicated, but we're selling beds, so we take whatever the budget uh, lodging average rate is in the city, and we divide it by three and multiply it by four. So now we're getting a premium from a rev par or revenue per room perspective. But on top of that, with an average of three people in the room, everyone has breakfast, everyone has a beer, everyone rents a locker, everyone buys a padlock, everyone rents a towel. So huge cash, which is very interesting on a sort of cash per square foot or cash per square meter. So the model is, is great. Uh, the other interesting thing is everyone pays in advance. They book in advance and pay in advance, and, and th there's no credit, there's no checkout. So whatever you consume, you buy on the spot. Uh, and when you leave, you just give your key back. So there's no age debtors. We like that. Tell us uh, you know, a little bit about your guests. You said that the average age is a lot higher than um, what people think. A lot of people are thinking like teenagers or 20s would be the average age. What's your age? 24, which is interesting. When you look at the Staywise research and the World Tourism Organization defining youth travel as 15 to 29, we're spot on in the middle. And uh, we sort of label our travelers the seeker. These are people out looking for experiences. And you've heard a lot of talk today about the new generation. They're digital, they're wired, but they're looking for unique. They're looking for local. They're looking for local flavors of food. You know, I can't, I love Coca-Cola as a brand, but I couldn't serve Coke. They don't want Coke. They want local. Uh, yes, we'll serve Heineken or Stella or whatever beer may be, but they want that local brew. They want the food to be local. Again, when I arrived, food was going to be planned across the estate, but we've now got, gone to localized, more or less street food following the trends of what's happening in the sort of young culture on the streets. 
Um, so the guest is the seeker. We get empty nesters. We even get some business travelers. Uh, if they walk in with a suit and a tie on, they'll quickly take it off. Mm -hmm. So th someone like me, I was stated uh, a generator in the past in London, and I was late 40s, and I loved it because the central location, um, I had extra money to go have a, you know, a great meal or do whatever I want. It was a little weird coming down in the morning because you know, everyone's 24, 25, but there were a few people my age. Do you see that as a growing market, you know, the, the, I guess, Gen X? Or no? Oh, for sure. Uh, the future is, uh, the buying power of the new generation is phenomenal. Uh, their will to travel, uh, the, uh, they know what they want, they seek it out. Um, but it's also the, you know, I'm 53, so I enjoy staying there too. You said you were 40? Mm -hmm. uh, the reality is... Late 40s, just so no. Or late 40s. I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> no, I mean, the reality is, it's people who are looking for this experience. And like you say, we have people going to Copenhagen, staying with us, paying about 55 euros, and then going off to a three Michelin star restaurant. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then they might blow $1,000 on a meal, but that's what's important to them. That's exactly what I did. I was staying at your place, I had a single room, and I went and checked out the new Rosewood, had a fantastic meal. Yes. I don't Thank know, you. I mean, whenever I travel, I'm going to bed at midnight, and I want to go have breakfast somewhere, square the neighborhood, so I'm out by eight, so, I mean, I just, it's just the economics of travel these days. And, and the demand is phenomenal. I was chatting in the back room, uh, here with some of the other speakers about, we opened in uh, Rome uh, for uh, 28 days ago. And day one, 70% occupancy with 200 beds. Day two, 90% occupancy, and we've been running 95% since opening. Same thing, open Amsterdam in March with almost 800 beds opened on a Wednesday in March. By the weekend we were sold out, we've been running 96% since. And it's, they're buying direct. I mean, we work with everybody. We work with tour operators, we work with OTAs, but about 60% of our business comes direct. And the marketing, I haven't paid for an ad since I arrived. As a matter of fact, I canceled a contract with in-flight magazines because everything is consumer generated. They just, they just promote us everywhere. And uh, you know, we heard about Commune earlier on and some of the great things going on there. Uh, same thing. Our biggest promoter is our guest. Mm -hmm. You told me in the past that your food and beverage is specifically designed and programmed to attract the locals. Yes. Um, you know, we hear that so much. Uh, Skip, you know, really broke that theme three years ago with the trend report about how um, hotels and hostels are portals into the local community. We've all heard it so much. I don't think anyone wants to hear it anymore. But you guys are doing something. I mean, how are you doing it different? Well, it's critical to our success, actually. And, and um, we, we, I actually work with a young guy. He's a 22-year-old, very accomplished English chef. He's not a signature chef. He's a hands-on guy who goes out and basically curates everything we do with food. And we do that by going out and st studying what's going on, as I said earlier on, with the street food. In the, in the, and this is what our guests are looking for. I mean, street food, you know, you could do a whole segment on street food, because it's just exploded with what's going on. Look at what's going on in Miami with the food trucks and so on. Uh, we study that and we bring it in. And we actually, we don't have concept restaurants. We have beautiful spaces, great spaces with a lot of music and activity, and then just great food. And it's grazing food. I mean, the youth today, they don't sit down and have a three-course meal. They come in, they may eat something, and they have a drink, and they meet, may eat something else, and they change the plans, and all of a sudden they had a full meal. You know, in London, we serve the most phenomenal uh, hot dogs. Mm -hmm. You must try one when you come. Okay. We start serving at two, from two to four, mm -hmm. and we sell hundreds of them. It sounds simple, but that's what people want. Mm -hmm. I also remember, too, how the sort of the rooms shift during, throughout the day. In the morning, it's breakfast, and at night, the room changed, and there were, it, basically was like a mini nightclub. Well, it's, it's, music is important. Mm -hmm. So we, we uh, put a lot of focus on music. As a matter of fact, we're just about to change our music programming and the guy helping us is an advisor to Apple iTunes and uh, previously worked for uh, MTV. Not that that matters, but music is critical, lighting is critical. But this is in lifestyle, in design, light, music, smell, placement of furniture, attitude, people, it all comes together, you know, and it's really an, almost an alchemy of a formula. Okay. We're going to get to, you know, your expansion into America in a bit, but 
what's scary in the future? What keeps you up at night? I mean, there's a lot of wear and tear in hostels. There's low margins, high real estate. You know, what, what are you worried about? Uh, coping with the growth, because every, this is not like opening the next box where we know that everything is going to be the same. Everything is customized from especially the design perspective. And if we lose that, then I think we will lose the connection and heart with our guest. But that, that design is not just the way it looks. It's the food, it's the music program, it's, it's everything. So that, that worries me. Finding the right people worries me. And everyone talks about people, but I could tell you recruiting and, and, and calling up a hotel GM and saying you're hostile, no matter what, even if they're running the crappiest hotel on the planet, they consider hostile a major step down. So we really have to then show them who we are, you know, show the material and, and, and demonstrate it because for them, joining a hostel company doesn't feel right, mm -hmm. right? So um, people, for sure, and obviously we have the whole global terrorism stuff. I mean, it, right. it keeps me awake. So I was at the 25 hours in Hamburg um, and I see some you know, similarities there, but just in, in terms of branding and branding with corporates and all of a sudden where you know, this new kind of, and they're not a hostel, but they're still sort of that really youthful, energetic, um, creative brand. But they had a mini Cooper in the lobby. Yeah. Someone had dropped a bucket of paint on it. Yeah. You go in the um, elevator, there's screens showing like minis doing all these crazy things. And there was a few collaborations like that. Brands are starting to look at you, which is crazy, a hostel, to, you know, create partnerships and events now, right? Yes. No, they are. I, and, you know, that's good. I don't mind competition at all, as a matter of fact. I told you about the f how few there are before. But uh, I think it's great. The more creativity you get, the more art you get, the more uh, But music. just this idea about partnerships with corporate, like you're a hostel and you're the, you know, moving into more corporate events and moving sure. to corporate partnerships. That's something new and that's something that's growing. You know, in, in Paris, one of our biggest segments of growth is getting people like Uber, uh, Red Bull, fashion houses, music labels, as a matter of fact, we're, when we in, we're on the 28th of October, we're opening a restaurant in Stockholm, and it's been designed to help the local music industry launch records, yeah. and the major publisher launch books, and it's going to be a bizarre place, but you'll love it. We'll talk about that next time. So there's all kinds of growth there. All okay. kinds of growth. For groups, corporate. Yeah. Okay, I got a couple of minutes left, two and a half minutes. Uh, tell us about America. What are your plans? Well, Michelle, is, we have finally... Put, uh, we've we've um, engaged a lady called Michelle Flagg, who's joining us to head up development here. So we're putting huge focus on, on the U.S., uh, North America, I would say Canada as well. We'll open next year in Miami, uh, right opposite Fahina. It's almost a dichotomy to think that you're going to have a hostel across from one of the most talked about luxury complexes in, in the state of Florida. Uh, we open there in October, beautiful Art Deco building on Collins Avenue. Uh, and then we're looking very seriously at the East Coast as a starting point. Uh, we sort of want to follow the U of the country. Um, I lived in Minnesota for a while. I'm not sure the Midwest is that well suited for our model, but who knows? Mm -hmm. I love Minnesota, so if anyone's from there, eight years. <laughs> My wife almost divorced me when I moved, made her move back to Europe. Anything different about how you're you know, designing the overall? I, I would say the, the, there will be um, a couple of things will be different. One, uh, I think to use the term food and beverage, we talk about bars and restaurants, we'll get a stronger emphasis here. Um, much higher price point. Uh, you look again at what Freehand have done. I mean, give them all the kudos in the world and what they've done down in, uh, in Miami with their operation. Uh, a lot of focus on that. A much higher bed rate uh, in the markets that we will achieve here. Um, we're also, as we expand now, looking at management contracts and leases, so we're not just buying assets, which gives us a quicker speed, let's say more speed to market. Um, and we do large. Our average hostel is 600 beds, mm -hmm. but if we come to New York, we'll probably do 1,000 beds because the economics work better. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, the more people we have, the better the vibe. Right. Any ideas in terms of the ratio of single room? I'm all about the single rooms. Any? I know you are. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it will vary market by market. Okay. Uh, it will also vary. It'll be the great thing about, uh, we can go into quirky buildings. Mm -hmm. We can do 12 bedded dorms, eight bedded dorms, 10 bedded dorms, two bedded, four bedded, and then suites and singles and doubles. So I, when we were planning Miami, mm -hmm. we were gonna do 50-50. 
We now revisit it and we're back to the 70-30. So we're going all out. Mm-hmm. Imagine you're buying a bed at that location mm-hmm. for somewhere between 45 and $65. You can't get a room in Miami for under 200 mm-hmm. at a, a decent room. There's some uncivilized You're a block off the beach. You're a block <laughs> off the beach. Cool. All right, well, thank you. Thank Good you.